And this is our gentle class. Today, our focus will be somewhat on the hips and um, the low back with a little bit of opening the heart and the chest. So big toes together, knees as wide as you'd like, maybe to the edges of your mat, and then extend those arms if your shoulders aren't too tight. If your shoulders are tight, then I encourage you to bend those elbows, stack the arms on top of one another, or even the fist if you prefer, and then rest the space between your eyebrows down on the stacked arms or fists. If this is still a little bit uncomfortable because you're trying to force the hips down, slide the weight of the body forward and keep your hips elevated. And you can always place a blanket in between your hamstring or the back of the thigh and the calves to where you can gently relax and seat down. From here, we'll go ahead and begin by taking a full breath in through our nose. And then we'll exhale to sigh that breath out, letting it go. Couple more, drawing that breath in. Noticing the expansion of the low abdomen and then your lungs, full capacity if possible. And then exhale, releasing that breath, drawing the navel towards the spine, letting gravity sink the hips closer towards the heels. One more big belly breath in through the nose. Sip in a little more air. And then exhale to sigh and release that breath. Go ahead and take the tongue, lick the lips, seal them to one another. And then you're going to begin breathing in and out of the nose. As you begin breathing in and out of the nose, your tongue can rest comfortably on the bottom of the mouth. Or if you prefer to take the tip of the tongue and gently press it to the roof of your mouth, then you can go that route as well where you're creating a channel for your breath to flow as you inhale and exhale out of the nostrils. If for any reason this particular style of breathing today feels too labored, then just breathe normal. Let your natural breath occur. Maybe take that cleansing breath instead as you inhale through the nose and sigh it out a few times. Anything that feels appropriate is where I want you to guide yourself and go this morning. While you're here in this child's pose, you begin to massage the space between those eyebrows. And if you're ready to extend the arms forward, know that you absolutely can. So those arms can lengthen towards the tip top of the mat as you gently relax the hips back. But if this feels best, your arms crossed, letting yourself strum that space back and forth from right side to left side, then do that. The shoulders pull away from the ears. You're noticing the sensation as the blood is constricted between the crease of the knee, the hamstring, and the quad, top of the shin bone, and your calves. Take a moment here to scan the body, whether it's from the tips of your fingers down to the very end of your toes, or if you prefer, from the crown of the head, down the body through the extremities, and then returning back up. You're only scanning as an observer, as always. It's a scan with love, with mindfulness, with gratitude for the beautiful being that you are and for the day we've been gifted to be here. If you're feeling worried, if you're doubting yourself or if something has you bummed, see what you can let go of. Let yourself just acknowledge it and let it be. Let it simmer like soup. Taking a couple more inhales here, you'll begin to set an intention or a dedication for our practice this morning. It can be anything from a single word to a phrase to a fill in the blank. Maybe you fill in the blank after I am. And it can be multiple words. It could be a phrase, again, a single word. I am grateful. I am content. I am love. I have peace in my heart. I am healing. Whatever feels the best for you, you'll go ahead and draw a full breath in, pressing those palms. So extending those arms, pressing those palms into the earth, feeling the rounding of the abdomen and the vertebrae. You'll exhale to sigh that breath out, relaxing the shoulders away from the ears. As you take your next breath in, press those palms into the mat, lift your heart, keep your hips back. And as you exhale, we'll walk our hands towards that top right corner as far as your body permits. As you get to that top right corner, you can lift your chest up a little higher so that you can slowly shrug the left shoulder away from the ear and turn the left rib cage down towards that right side and then slither the hands forward, bowing your chest down. 
If this is too difficult for you, stack those palms, let your head rest on the stacked hands once more, even though you're at that slight angle towards that right side. You can also just extend that left arm and slide that right hand towards your right ankle. Draw a breath in, either forehead or temple or down on the mat. Let that breath go. Another full breath in here. Letting that breath go. As you take your next inhale, if you have your right hand on that right heel, release it. Bring it back towards that top right corner. Press the palms into the mat as you inhale. Walk your hands back towards center and we'll exhale. Take those hands over towards that top left corner. Again, press the palms into the earth. Let yourself drop that right shoulder, rotate the right rib cage towards that left side. And then you can stack the palms or if you prefer, take that left hand towards your left heel as you bow your chest down. Take a full breath in, active fingertips if they're towards that top left corner, or maybe bend the elbow. Let that breath go. Two more, draw the breath in. Let that breath go. Last one, inhale through the nose. And exhale to release that breath. Pressing the palms into the earth. So sliding that right hand back, left hand back towards the top. Lift the chest up, inhale, the hands come back to center. And now we'll exhale, lower the heart and the chest back down as we sink the hips back for that child's pose. Take a moment here for yourself. And only when you're ready, you'll inhale and rise up onto all fours or that tabletop position. Bring your knees back in towards alignment. Wiggle those hips side to side. Maybe begin to lift your feet off the mat as you trace a few circles with your ankles in each direction, just bringing blood flow back into the ankles and the feet. Take a breath in and then pat the tops of your feet onto the mat. Looking towards the top of your mat, take a breath in. And then as you exhale, stop and pause. As you stop and pause, relax the shoulders away from the ears. Send the hips back as your knees are in line with your femur. So knee and femur, hip all in line. And then we're going to bend our elbows. So as we bend those elbows, look forward, slide the shoulders away from your ears. And then on that inhale, elbows drop down. Slither the heart forward, lift your heart up, pull the ribs together. And then exhale, you're going to dome the spine, slide the weight of the body back again. Elbows tuck in, shoulders pull back, heart lifts up. Exhale, doming that spine, rolling the hips towards the heels. Two more, inhale, grip your fingers into the earth, lift through the sternum. Exhale, take it back. Your chin doesn't have to touch your chest, but you definitely can look down. Last one, inhale, lift it up. Retraction of the shoulders, protraction now of your shoulders as you slide back. And then on that next breath in, let the weight of the body come forward. As the weight of the body comes forward, tuck those toes, send the weight of the body back, stretching the bottom of our feet. As we stretch the bottom of our feet, our hands can start to walk a little closer towards our kneecaps, our shoulders shrug away from the ears once more. A breath in as we look forward. And then if you'd like, exhale, roll those little toes out to the edges of your mat. If it's too intense, slide forward. That'll take that pressure, release some of that sensation. Inhale, the toes come back to center. Exhale, those toes roll out. One more, inhale back to center. Exhale, let those toes roll back out. And then on that next breath in, roll the toes in, walk the palms back towards the top, lift your feet off the mat, and maybe just crinkle those toes, getting that sensation back into your feet. On your next inhale, curling the toes under, pulling the shoulders back. Three more rounds of cat cows, but this time on hands and knees versus sliding back and forth. So inhale, protraction, retraction of the shoulders, lifting the chest up. Stretch and strengthen through the core. Exhale, dome the spine, catting it up. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale to cat it back. Use that breath work. Inhale, one more. Soft bend of the elbows to protect the joints. And then exhale, doming that spine, straightening the arms, but not hyperextending. And then inhale, neutralize. As we neutralize, knees come together. Go ahead and tuck your right toes under as you tuck the right toes under. We'll inhale, extend that left leg nice and long. Point the toes down towards the ground. A couple of circles if you'd like with your ankle. And as you exhale, cross the foot over towards your right side. Keep that left leg long and strong. Press out of that left heel and then exhale, look over the shoulder. 
If you have any sensation through the side body that is too intense, then keep your foot directly behind you instead of crossing. Squeeze the thighs if you need a little bit more. Feel your shoulders roll away from your ears, taking one more breath in. You can exhale, look over that right shoulder just a little bit more. A full belly breath in here and that big giant release here. On our next inhale, keep your legs the way they are. Maybe let the top of that right foot rest on the mat. Look towards the top of your mat. Bend the left knee behind your right knee. Let your knees come to center or the center of your mat. Blades of your feet can come out to the edges. And then you have the option to exhale to release the hips back as you rest your chest down. You also have the option to place the forearms down on the ground, stack your fist and release the head there instead. Any variation. Some people like to even take the hips all the way back. And if that happens to be you, then let your hips come all the way back. And if they happen to come all the way back and they're not touching the ground, that's okay too. Maybe you take the chin close to the kneecap, and then you begin to spider walk those fingers towards the front. See if you can slowly begin to flex your feet so that the blades of your feet stay anchored into the mat if you happen to be all the way to the back. Take a full breath in, relax the right hip down, let that breath go. Take two more breath in, and that breath out. Again, if you're elevated up, that's perfectly fine. Last inhale here. Last exhale, we're just opening up and creating space for the back side of our body. As you take your next breath in, your fingertips press into the ground, lift and look forward, walk your hands, shifting the weight of the body back towards the top. You'll extend and straighten this left leg behind you. You'll take your right foot, hooking it over towards the right edge of the mat, and then inhale, open your body for that side plank. As you come into your side plank, let this left hand go anywhere it feels right. It could be to your hip. It could be to the top of the mat. It could be a couple of shoulder circles to allow fluidity and movement. The only thing that I ask is that you inhale and exhale fluidly, so don't constrict your breath, and that you also stack this right, right shoulder with that right wrist. Pause wherever you're at. Extend and lift that left arm up, letting that breath go on your next inhale. If you'd like, lift and float your left leg off the ground. If that left leg doesn't feel right lifting today, don't lift it then. Point the toes. If you'd like, curl the heel in towards your body. Your hand can come to your hip. Your knee can come in. You can slide your hand down the shin bone and connect. If this is too much, release. Whatever feels right for you, draw a breath in. Let that breath go. One more inhale and we let that breath go. On our next breath in, we'll release. Extend the leg and the arm. Exhale, drop the blade of the foot down, spin your left hand back to protect the shoulder, lower the palm down, rotate the hips so they point towards center of your mat, and then slide your left foot out towards that left edge of the room. And I'm mirroring, so go ahead and know that I'll mirror you if you're looking at your screen. As you come here, slide the weight of the body back, walk your fingertips closer towards your right knee, and then when you have stability, inhale, lift and rise up. As we lift and rise up, Press the pinky side blade of that left foot into the edge of your mat where there's alignment through the hip and where you feel that length. Take a full breath in with your arms up. Exhale, head to the elbows, pull down, the ribs come together. Inhale, those arms reach up. Side bend, also known as gate pose. Release and extend the left fingertips towards the toes. Open that right shoulder up and reach with your right arm. If your shoulder's tender, bring that right hand to your shoulder, bring that right hand to your hip, or maybe that right hand can rest behind your back. Any of the above, or maybe a creative variation for yourself. Take a full breath in. We're opening up through the side of the right portion of the right hip. Let that breath go. Feel the length and the stretch through the hip flexor as well, and maybe even the psoas. Let that breath go. On our next inhale, both arms reach up. And then we'll exhale, pull the heads of our elbows down. Take that gaze up if it feels good. Feel the thumbs reach back. Feel your shoulders come towards one another behind your body. And then inhale, the arms reach up. On your exhale, release your fingertips and then your palms down to the mat. Walk your hands forward. If your right foot is directly out to the right side, curl it over towards that left. Slide your left foot out a little bit. Release your forearms down. If this is comfortable for your inner thigh, stay right here. If you need to bend the left knee, bend it a little bit more to get deeper into the inner thigh. Or if you prefer, slide the hips back and then release the chest down or take that left hand, grabbing that left foot. 
Anything that feels right for you. If your forehead isn't resting on the mat, you can always stack your fist. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out of your nose. You're feeling a sensation through your hip flexor. That's okay. It's bringing itself together. So we're trying to create a constraint. And then from there, when we open back up, it'll open and release. Take another breath in here. Let that breath go. And then on your next inhale, press those palms into the ground. Lift your heart up. Let yourself adjust for a moment. Sliding or stepping this left foot back in towards your mat and then back out. As you step it out a few circles with this left knee in one direction and then the opposite direction. And then release the knee back down to the mat and we'll repeat on the opposite side. You can wiggle your hips to see what's going on with right versus left. You can take a round two or three of cat cows. You can sink into your child's pose or find yourself in stillness and tabletop and then join me when you're ready. All on your breath and time. Tuck the left toes under, inhale, that right leg goes out. Pull the navel up and in. As you exhale, step or cross this right foot to the left side, squeeze the thighs once more. Exhaling the breath, looking over that left shoulder. Take a breath in, let that breath go. Again, you know you have the ability to release if it's too much, so you can step that right foot directly behind you versus crossing it. You can also be a little less Intense as you look over the shoulder. But if you need a little more intensity, send that right hip over towards that right side. Take that gaze over that left shoulder. One last breath in. Let that breath go. Then on your next inhale, keep the legs as they are. Look towards the top edge of your mat, bending your right knee behind the left one, walking the knees towards center. Blades of your feet go out to the edges of the mat. Take a breath in. And on your exhale, begin to send the weight of the body back or bow the chest down. All the variations that are available to you that I offered earlier or creating your own, wherever you are, blades of your feet are into the ground. You're relaxing the chest closer towards those thighs or even the earth. Arms can be extended, hands can be bent or the elbows actually. Chin can come towards the kneecap or it can be floating up. Take a full breath in here. Let that breath go. Another big giant breath in through the nose. Letting it go. And you're taking one more big sip of air. Let it filtrate and enter the body. And then exhale, bowing it down, letting that breath go. Only when it feels right for you, press the palms back into the mat. Lift the heart up, looking forward. Fingertips tent, and you can slide the weight of the body forward, pawing your palms towards the top. Extend and release the right leg behind you. Hook the left toes to the left edge for that side plank as you inhale and rise up. As you come into your side plank and you extend that palm up, know that you have the option once more to take the fingertips towards the top of the mat, your hip, or anywhere in between. Full breath in wherever you are. Full breath out. Keep those hip points pointing towards your right side. So keep them open if possible. On your next breath in, extend and lift that right arm up. Lift that right leg off the ground, stacking that left shoulder over the wrist. And then if it feels okay, curl the heel in towards the body. Either reach back and grab it, hand on the hip, or shine that knee in towards your body. And then extend and reach back. Take a full breath in here, bringing the shoulder blades together. But as the shoulder blades come together and the heart is expanded, you still keep the ribs together. Meaning like if you were tying a shoe, you would keep that shoelace nice and tight. A full breath in and that full breath out. Last one. And then on your next inhale, release, extend the arm and the leg, blade of the foot down. Spin this right hand down, rotate your hips to point towards the front and then slide this right leg out towards your right side. As that right leg goes out towards that right side, you're pressing through the blade of your foot. You're allowing this left leg to get comfy. Take a breath in, looking forward. And then exhale, you can slowly begin to send the weight of the body back, working your fingertips towards you, and then inhale on that left knee, arms reach up. As the arms reach up, breathe in, maybe close your eyes here. And then exhale, pull the elbows down to your sides like a W. And then inhale, expand those arms back up. Exhale, releasing that right hand towards that right side. If your right shoulder collapsed and closed, open it up. Even if it means sliding your hand or allowing that alignment for your spine versus that curvature. Take a full breath in here. 
Let that breath go. Take one more inhale here and let that breath go. Then on your next breath in with your core, lift all the way up. On that exhale, pull the elbows down once more. Inhale, lift them up. Exhale, release and lower your fingertips down. As you lower the fingertips down, paw your hands forward. As you paw your hands forward, you might wanna slide your right foot out and hook that left foot over towards that right edge just a little bit more. All on your time, begin to release the hips down. As you release the hips down, you can bring those elbows, the forearms, you can even bend that right knee if that's more opening for you. If it's too intense, or maybe your knee just has a little bit of tenderness, so you need a softer bend or a greater bend, that's where you can be. Take a full breath in regardless of where you're at. Let that breath go. Two more, big breath in. Now you're feeling that left side. We're bringing that hip flexor together. Let that breath go. It's okay. You're going to be all right unless there's sharp sensations, then back off. One more breath in and that breath out. When you're ready, those palms come down to the earth, pressing the hands into the mat. Lift your heart up as you lift that heart up, sliding this right leg towards your body. And as you slide this right leg towards your body, take that right leg behind you. Lift the right knee in a few circles in each direction bringing that blood flow or that synovial fluid into that right hip socket. Wiggle those hips from the right side to the left side and any additional movement. When you're ready, tuck the toes under, send the hips back. Pause for a moment as you pull your shoulders back and down as you allow yourself to protract the back or the blades of the body. On your inhale, lift the knees, tilt the hips up and exhale into a downward facing dog. In your downward facing dog, you begin to march or paddle your feet out. As you march or paddle the feet out, notice the length and the fluidity of the hamstrings, the calves, the soles of your feet, and maybe even your toes today. Don't allow yourself to collapse into the heels of the hands. So just for visualization, if your heels are pressing into the mat, the heels of your hands, that is, then I want you to create a little suction cup where you press through the knuckles and the finger pads. Pause wherever you are and find stillness in downward facing dog. Pull your shoulders away from your ears. Let that head lengthen or the crown grow long. And then on your next breath in, lift the heels, bend those knees. Take your time as you look forward or if you decide, look, continue to look down at the toes and walk your hands towards the back or walk your feet towards the top as you exhale for a forward fold. Inhale, we'll lift up halfway. Those knees are bent generously. Exhale, we'll release it all the way back down. Separating the feet wider than hip width distance. Grab those elbows when you're ready for ragdoll. As you grab those elbows for ragdoll, notice if you can release the crown of the head to point down towards your mat versus trying to look at the top or the tip of your mat. This will release the tendons, the muscles through the neck, through the back, through the shoulders. You'll feel that lean through the low spine, a breath in here and a breath out. Find stillness as you come into that wide leg, into your forward fold, release the hands down to the mat. Heel toe your feet all the way back towards one another and take your time. And then when you're ready, inhale, reverse and rise all the way up. Sweep those arms to the sides, up to the sky, a full breath in. And then exhale, let those hands come into prayer and at your heart space. Draw a breath in, shoulders relaxed. Let that breath go. Shoulders continue to relax. On your next inhale, circle sweep those arms up towards the sky. Exhale, pull the heads of the elbows down. Inhale, those arms reach up. Exhale, forward fold, lowering those palms down to the mat. Step back with that left foot. Pivot the left foot for warrior two. Bringing stability into the body, you can always take your right fingertips, bring it to that right thigh, and then inhale, rise all the way up into your warrior two. Both hands can come to your hips so that you can align yourself so that you can find that strength and then lengthen those arms. As you lengthen those arms, you're active, but you're in the center. Fingers are wide so that if you have them crunched up or in a fist, open them up. Drop that back hand down. Keep that right knee in line with the ankle and the hip. Flip that right palm and then inhale, reverse your warrior. As you reverse the warrior here, you don't need to hyperextend the body. It's not about that hyperextension. It's about pressing or feeling that palm reach back. One more inhale here and exhale here. Then take a breath in and while exhale, take it to extended side angle. 
in extended side angle, most of us want to collapse our body here. So instead of collapsing here, feel yourself lift up as you extend and reach that left arm up towards the sky. You're feeling the hip on this left side opening up and you're pressing through that pinky side blade on the left foot, creating an arch with the foot as well. If you prefer to extend the arm up towards the sky, extend it up towards the sky or even towards the front. You'll find more length if it's towards the front. So if the sensation is too much, back off, breath in breath out and then inhale reverse that warrior trace those hands back and then exhale cartwheel your hands bring that front foot you're now on the ball of your left foot and as you come to the ball of your left foot drop that left knee down top of the left foot on the mat looking forward inhale take your time as you rise up sweep the arms up on that breath in exhale head to the elbows pull down inhale those arms reach up Exhale, your hands return to the mat, framing your right foot, looking forward, straighten that right leg, leg, slide the hips back. You can keep your fingertips close to your foot. You can walk those fingertips closer towards your body. You can grab books, blocks, or use your coffee table as you lift the heart up. Point the toes if you'd like, flex the foot if you prefer, and then if it feels right, exhale, you can fold forward. If you happen to have blocks, you can always place those elbows or the forearms on the blocks. That elevates the earth up to you. So it's not a cheat, it's just an extension of your body for a little more comfort, giving ourselves some grace as we're balancing out the body. Take a breath in here. Let that breath go. Take another breath in here. And we'll let that breath go. If you happen to have books or blocks, go ahead and place those palms down on the blocks. Lift the heart up. Otherwise, your hands are down on the ground. Rebending through that right knee. Remove the props or the blocks out of the way. Fingertips frame that front foot. As you frame that front foot, bring this right hand over towards your left side so that you can slowly release this right leg behind you in a couple of hip circles in one direction and the opposite direction. And then release and lower the knee down as we release and lower that right knee down, curling those toes, sliding the hips back, tilting the hips back up, exhale into downward facing dog. From that downward facing dog, march it out, pause in the center, and then inhale. You can roll into plank pose, releasing, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> releasing your knees to the mat. <laughs> My apologies. Lower all the way down. <clears throat> excuse me as you lower all the way down hands come out beyond the mat and then inhale rise up <clears throat> a little modified cobra as you modify here breathe in and as you exhale lower it down <clears throat> on your next inhale lift it back up take your right shoulder down look to the left Big inhale here, big exhale here. And then inhale, come back, rise back up. Take that left shoulder down, look over to your right. Again, my apologies for those coughs. Something went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> inhale, come back to center. And then exhale, release and lower your frame back down. As you release and lower the frame back down, let the hands come off the mat. Bring your hands to your breastbone. Bring those thighs, those toes together, <clears throat> curling the toes under. Pull your elbows in. This is probably the part where we lack some of our strength and I'm as guilty as the next person. So tuck the elbows in, pull the belly up and then inhale, come into plank on your knees. Let the toes touch, take the knees out wide and then we'll exhale, slide the hips into that child's pose. Any variation that you need here in child's pose, those arms extended forward, those elbows bent, your hands stacked or even bringing those hands towards the heels as you rest your forehead down on the mat. A breath in through the nose here. Let that breath go. Release the glutes. Release the hips. Two more breath in. And that breath out. The last one. Big inhale. And then exhale to release and let it go. If your arms are to the back side of the body, extend those arms forward. If your arms are forward, press the palms into the mat. Lift the body up. As we lift ourselves up, we're back in that tabletop position. We're taking three rounds of cat kill and then working our way back into that downward facing dog. So on that inhale, drop the belly down, pull the elbow heads back, lift the heart up. Exhale, dome that spine, catting it up. Inhale, cow pose. 
Exhale, taking it back. And one more, inhale, cow pose. And then exhale, taking it back. On our next breath in, we'll neutralize in tabletop, curling the toes under, lifting our knees, taking our hips up towards the sky, marching our feet out. A breath in and a breath out. On our next inhale, lift the heels high, bend those knees generously, looking forward. Walk your feet towards your thumbs, or if it's easier or better for your body, walk your hands towards your toes as you exhale for a forward fold. Inhale, lift it up halfway. Exhale, release and fold it all the way back down. And then inhale, reverse and rise. Drag those arms to the sides, up to the sky, full belly breath in. Exhale, head to the elbows, pull down, the ribs stay together. Inhale, our arms reach up and exhale, <clears throat> forward fold. Lowering those palms down to the mat. Bend your knees as much as you need to. Step back with your right foot. Pivot that right foot for warrior two. Again, align the heel of the arch with, excuse me, not the arch, the heel of the ankle with your knee as you inhale, lift it up. Once you've risen, and then you can bring those arms out. You can always car wheel the arm over if you prefer. That's your choice. Take a breath in here. Look just beyond those left fingers. Let that breath go. Back hand goes down. Front hand flips over. Inhale, reverse it. Again, it's like you're pressing into a sponge behind you. It's not about how far can you arch your back or your spine today. We're allowing our softness to enter versus that full work all the time. Breath in, breath out. One more inhale and then exhale, extended side angle. Forearm on the thigh with little to no weight. Extend and lift that right arm up. Spread those fingers, including the left hand. Let yourself breathe in fully here. Let yourself release that breath. One more. Letting it go. And now inhale, reverse the warrior. Your legs stay the same, but those hands cartwheel or travel back like a windmill. And then exhale, our hands cartwheel forward or hands come to our hip. We pop that back heel off. We release the fingertips down to the mat. Many ways to get there. Take a breath in here. And now exhale, release that right knee down, top of your right foot on the ground. Looking forward, lift that chest up. Peace fingers on the ground. Inhale, lift it up. Arms fan up. And now exhale, elbows pull down, lean through the hip flexor. Part of our back and low spine issues sometimes are tight hip flexors, tight psoas. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hands frame that front foot. Again, if you need your props, grab your books, grab your blocks. Hands can travel towards the body, straightening that front leg. Exhale, we bow it down. Forearms can be on the block, point the toes, flexing those toes, whatever feels right for you. If you feel like you're doming your spine and it's good for your body, then go ahead and stay there. But if it's possible, flatten the body out, feel yourself, hug the femur into the hip socket. And this will give you a little bit more length through that back side of the leg. Breath in, breath out. Another breath in and that breath out. When you're ready, your hands either return to the mat or your hands come onto those blocks as you press and lift your heart up. Rebending that left knee, the sole of the left foot goes down to the mat. Remove those items out of your way. Fingertips frame that front foot. Bring that left hand over towards your right side. Step this left foot back and a couple of circles with your knee in one direction and the opposite direction. And then release and lower the knee down, wiggle those hips right side to left side. All on your breath in time, take a breath in, stay on those knees. In fact, as you stay on those knees, extend your arms forward. As you extend the arms, we're not in line. So those arms are reaching forward. And then once you slide the weight of the body towards the top, you'll notice that now your shoulders are here over the wrist. Lift the legs if you need to, pull the belly in, tuck the elbows, bend them and lower yourself all the way down. As you lower yourself all the way down, hands stay close to your breastbone. You allow the ribs to connect as you gently hug the side body with those elbows and you lift your chest up. If you've lifted your feet, see if you can keep them down today. Just for a brief moment, breath in, breath out. Another breath in and that breath out. When you're ready, exhale, release. As you release, bring your hands in front, stack right palm on top of left. Rest your forehead or your chin down on the stack palm. Bend those knees, windshield wiper those legs side to side. 
Release and relax. Take a breath in. Let that breath go. And then extend those legs nice and long as those legs come nice and long. Heel toe your feet back towards one another. Extending your left arm forward, come onto your left side. So bring that right hand to your breastbone. Your left arm can be straight. Your left arm can be at a 90 degree angle. So you're letting yourself rest the head on top of this left bicep. So that left arm can be out. That left arm can support your head or any variation that feels right for your shoulder. From here, lifting that right leg off the ground, pull that right knee into your belly. As that right knee comes into your belly, your hand is gonna grab the ankle and then you're slowly gonna begin to curl the heel in towards the glute and release that hip flexor even more. So think of dancer's pose. Usually in dancer's pose, we're standing on the sole of the foot, balancing on one leg. And sometimes it's difficult, right, to connect. So this is you taking dancer's pose on the ground. If you feel that your leg, your left leg needs to bend, bend that left leg, that's okay. But if you can keep it long, keep it long. If you have any tenderness through the hip, because we are resting on that left hip, maybe you prefer to roll onto your belly. And if you do roll onto your belly, you might want to bend that left elbow and then curl the heel. If you wanna lift the knee up a little bit, you can, but it is a little bit more challenging. It just depends where you're at today. So many options for you to choose from that feels right for you. When you're ready to release, release, extending that right leg, meeting that left one. From here, bring the fingertips in front of you as you bring the fingertips in front of you, flexing the right and the left foot, just to see how the hip alignment feels. You'll breathe in, and then you'll exhale, lower it down. Just a little bit of core strength. Inhale, we'll lift it up. Exhale, we'll lower it down. Last time, inhale, we lift up. Exhale, we lower it down. Take your left, right fingertips towards that top right corner. Roll into your belly as you roll into your belly. We're going to take it the opposite way. So first, let's stack the hands. So we had right on top of left. Now you're going to have left on top of right. As left is on top of right, you'll bend those knees, windshield wiper those legs, right side to left side. When it feels comfy for you, extend the legs nice and long. As those legs go nice and long, toes tuck. Knees or thighs walk their way back towards one another. Extending your right arm when you're ready, left fingertips come to your breastbone. Roll over onto your side, let your head rest on that right bicep or let your head rest in the palm of your right hand, your choice. Take a breath in, let that breath go. When you're ready, lift and float that left leg off the ground or off your opposite leg. Curl the knee in or if you prefer, just curl the heel towards the body and reach back and grab. Again, flex that left foot, flex that, excuse me, right foot, so that you feel like you're on the ground, curling the heel in towards the body, kicking the toes away from the frame. That's where you're going to feel that length. If you need to come onto your abdomen, come onto your abdomen. So this is also, you know, not only dancer's pose on the earth, but some people like to say maybe it's a partial or a half of a bow pose. So there are times when bow pose, when we're on our belly, we're compressed and the diaphragm is finding its difficulties in breathing. So this is just a little more a way for you to come into a half bind versus that full bind. And if this is too much, your hand releases. If you can't grab the heel, no big deal. Just curl the toes. It's no problem. Take a breath in here or grab your strap. Let that breath go. One more breath in. Breath out. When you're ready, we're going to release. Extend that leg. Let them stack on top of one another. Fingertips on your left hand come down next to you. And we're going to find that little bit of core connection. So you're pulling the obliques together, almost like you've tied yourself in the center like a small knot. And then from here, fingertips press. This is your strength as well as your powerhouse, which is your belly. And your powerhouse, your core pelvic floor as well, or perineum. On an inhale, lift those legs. Exhale, lower them down. Two more. Inhale, we lift it up. Exhale, we lower it down. Last one. Breath in, lift up. Breath out, lower down. Beautiful job, everyone. Go ahead and release. Rolling yourself onto your belly, bringing those hands on top of one another. Stack whichever one you prefer on top or let your chin rest on your stacked hands. Bend those knees back and forth. Sway those legs side to side. Let yourself breathe here. Let yourself release that breath here. Now we'll return or actually come into Sphinx pose. Looking forward, lift the chin off the ground or off those hands. Extend your forearms forward. 
Begin to place those elbows down into the earth as those palms press into the ground for your Sphinx pose. If your low back is really tender this morning, it may be better for you to stay lower and find that baby cobra instead. But a Sphinx pose feels good. Visualize yourself like that Egyptian statue where you're looking forward, your eyes may be closed, your shoulders are in line with those elbows and your fingertips are extending forward. You might even wanna flip the palms up if that feels better for you. You may notice that link through the front portion of your thighs, what feels good. Some people like to tuck their toes. For me, my back's a little sensitive and so that doesn't necessarily work for my body. But if it does for yours, then honor yourself. Take a breath in, let that breath go. Take another breath in and let that breath go. All on your breath in time, we'll slowly begin to retract the shoulders, pull those elbows out, let our hands come to our breastbone, walk our knees towards one another and our thighs, press into a tabletop position and take a few rounds of either cat cows or hip circles or side to side movement, releasing that low spine. Anything that feels yummy to the body, anything that allows fluidity and movement, a breath in and that breath out. Two more, inhale through your nose, exhale out of the nose. And this time we're gonna inhale through the nose, big toes together, knees out wide, and then we'll exhale. Sink our hips towards the heels as we release the body down. See if in this child's pose, you can actually keep those arms extended towards the top of your mat instead of bending them. But of course, if you need to bend those elbows and stack the palms, go for it. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhaling through our nose. Open mouth side, let it go. Last one, take that inhale. And that exhale. Only when it feels right for you, press those palms into the earth. Lift the heart out. Slide those hands towards your body. Bringing those knees towards one another. Let your hips drop to one side and find yourself on your bottom. As you find yourself on your bottom, allow those legs to extend nice and long. If you need a strap or you have a blanket or a towel or something you want to wrap around your feet, you can for the additional length of your arms. But if you don't, it's no problem. Bend those knees as much as you need to. If you have a strap on that inhale, allow the arms to reach over the head. And as you exhale, the hands come down to the strap as you slowly fold the body over and allow the strap to rest around the balls of your feet. Instead of pulling your toes towards you, can you soften those toes and release the chest down, letting yourself slowly decompress. You're working by curling those biceps in if you're holding onto a strap. If you don't have that strap, your hands are down to your side. Your hands can be on your thighs or even the shin bones. And then you gently bend those knees and allow that grip of the heel to pull back for that length. Breath in, breath out. Another breath in and that breath out. As you take your next inhale, begin to slide your hands if you have a strap or walk those hands forward. As you do, slide that left leg out towards that left side with a strap if you have it. Curl this right foot towards the inner thigh and if you need to support the inner thigh and you don't have a blanket, roll part of your mat if you need to. So change the position you're in. And if you roll that mat or if you have that block, find that support right here. As you find that support, breathe in, rise up tall. And as we exhale, we'll begin to paw our hands like we're reaching for our toes along that strap. Breathe in through the nose. As you inhale, you can lift your chest up. And as you exhale, you'll bow it down. Again, try to keep that strap, if you have it, away from the arch of your foot. All those small little tendons, we don't want to agitate them. We're all about finding our balance and that softness, our own edge. You may notice as you breathe in, you're releasing the right side and part of the left side of the body. One more breath here, letting that breath go. If you have a strap, your next step is to inhale, lift up. And if you don't, you're still going to lift up. If you have a strap, hold on to the strap with your left hand. Bring that left elbow towards the inside and then hanging on to your strap, 
start to look up, extend that right arm up, and then maybe reaching for your strap somewhere on this right with this right hand. Hold on to it partially with the left, partially with the right. It might be out a little bit more, especially if you don't have that shoulder expansion. If you do not have a strap, your elbow is over to this inner portion and your right arm can still lift up. Your right arm can come to your shoulder or that hip. Breathing in through the nose here, breathing out. Find that softness to this right side. One more inhale. And that exhale. On your next breath in, if the arm is up, feel the length. And then exhale, bend the elbow, rotate the heart back and around. On your next breath in, rise up. Slide the strap from your foot if you had it. And if you don't, no big deal, just rise up. Extend that mat out. Bring this left leg forward, bring this right leg forward, bend both knees and let the weight of the body go back so that you can massage the glutes now. Take a breath in and let that breath go. All on your breath in time, extending those legs forward once more. If you prefer butterfly legs, you can always come into butterfly legs, your choice. Breathe in through the nose and then we'll exhale, bow it down. If you happen to have the legs long and you have that strap, use your strap there. And if you don't, you can always come into butterfly to get into the inner thighs and release that low spine. Breath in and a breath out. And then as we inhale, we'll slowly release the strap and start to slide our hands along the thighs as we let go of the, of the band. If you are in butterfly, bring your knees together. Take that right leg out towards that right corner. Bring the sole of your left foot in. Line your hips so where <coughs> you're gently bringing this left right femur into the socket, bending the knee. You might want to place that strap and then extend the leg. Take a breath in, nice tall spine. And then exhale, folding that body forward. Again, support the thigh. So if you need to fold your mat or you have that block, whatever it may be, support the thigh. Breath in and a breath out. Another full breath in here and that breath out. It's not about how far you can bend over, or even if you can reach those toes. It's about where is your edge? Where are you feeling that release? Another two inhales here. And that last breath in. When you're ready, if you have the strap or not, you're holding on to the strap, you're bringing your elbow towards that inner portion of your right thigh, breathing in through the nose, Find the longest part of the strap and then inhale, rotate the heart open. Might be that the strap is forward. It might be that the strap is directly in front of you. It could even be that that strap is behind your body because you have that shoulder extension. It's up to you. If you can't look up, don't look up, look down, look forward. Breath in, breath out. And if you've gone too far down, lift your heart up and maybe you're right here instead. One more breath in. And that breath out. On your next inhale, reach the fingertips up. Exhale, bend the elbow. Rotate the chest to point down towards this right leg. Release the strap. Inhale, we'll rise up. As we rise up, <clears throat> release the support of this left leg and remove that strap. As we remove that strap, we'll extend both legs towards the front and final fold over. Pull the flesh from underneath the bottom, a soft bend of those knees with or without your strap, arms reach up, heart goes up, and then exhale, we'll fold it forward. As you fold forward, breathe in and look towards your toes. And as you exhale, breathe out and continue to look at the ankles until you get to your shin bones and then your knees. Feel your shoulders pull away from the ears as you take one more breath in. And you let that breath go. When you're ready, you're going to begin to rise up. And as you rise up, your hands come along the thighs. As your hands reach the thighs, work your way onto your back. Gently tuck those knees in towards your chest. Your fingers or your hands can rest on the kneecaps and you can go in little bitty circles. Or if you prefer, feet down, windshield wiper side to side. Neither is incorrect. A breath in and a breath out. When you're ready, sole of your left foot stays down, right leg crosses over. Stay right here if this feels best for you or even with your strap. You can take that strap around the left hand string and then your hands can hold on to the strap as you lift the sole of your foot up. 
you're happy there, stay here. Some people, when they're holding the strap, like to bring their arms over their head. If that's you, that's fine. If you prefer the interlacing of the fingers around the hamstring, that's great too. Flexing at least the right toes. Let the tailbone drop down. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out of the mouth. One more. Letting that one go. If your hands are interlaced or you have that strap, release. Lower the sole of your left foot down. Cross this right leg all the way over. Maybe even dangle the leg just a tiny bit. Now think about when we were on our, on our knees and we had that one knee behind us. This time you'll lift the soles of the feet up. Bring those knees into your chest. Your hands can rest on the kneecap. You can slide your hands down your shin bone as you gently guide the knees either in towards the heart or you allow the heels to come towards your glute. Everyone's slightly different. Flexing the feet if you'd like. That activates the shin bone muscle, the tibialis, a breath in and a breath out. You might also notice that it could release the calf muscle or maybe it creates a little bit more work, but your choice. Soft toes are okay too. One more inhale and exhale. Letting go, we'll let our hands come to the outside edges of our thighs. We'll extend those legs up. Bend that right knee, cross that left ankle over. If you have that strap, take that strap once more. And if you don't, thread your hands, flexing those left toes, figure four. And let gravity do some of the work for you. If you have your head elevated, then maybe you need to take a soft blanket or a pillow and let your head rest on it instead. I'm gonna say that a cork block is probably a little too firm, but just as a visual effect, I'm using it so that you can see that you can relax the head here versus forcing the body to hold up. Find your softness where you're at. Keep those left toes flexed, but you can do anything with this right ankle. One more inhale. And that exhale. All on your breath in time. If you have that block, release it. Lowering the sole of that right foot down, cross that left leg over, dangle the leg, the foot. And then on that inhale, lift the foot up. And as you exhale, bring the knees into your chest, hands to the kneecap and sliding down that shin bone. Let the tailbone drop down. And if you happen to have a head elevated, we're not gonna be here too many inhales or exhales, but maybe you can release the legs away from the body so that you can anchor the head back down onto the mat. Take a breath in here. Let that breath go. Taking another inhale here. Letting that breath go. When you're ready, you'll release. Extend those legs up towards the sky. As those legs go up towards the sky, the knees can be bent. You can point the toes, flex the toes. You can hang on to the hamstrings or the back of the thighs. If you prefer to take the strap, placing it around the balls of the feet, you can do that as well. Your choice. Feel your tailbone drop down. Another inhale here. And as you exhale, knees come in towards your armpits. Either grab the outside or the little pinky toe, uh, pinky toe blade or take your hands, wrapping them around the hamstring so that you can come into happy baby. Rock or wiggle from right side to left side. You can look in one direction and then the opposite. Inhale through the nose here. Exhale, either out of the mouth for cleansing breath. And maybe even an ah, uh, or through the nose if you prefer. As you're here, remind yourself of what that initial intention or your one word or your fill in the blank was. If you don't remember, then that's okay. No big deal. This means you were in your moment in your space. When you're ready to release this happy baby, letting it go, tuck those knees into your chest. Give yourself a nice little hug. You can lift the head off the mat if you'd like. And then as you exhale, releasing, lowering the soles of the feet down, those arms go out to cactus or letter T. Pressing through the soles of the feet, slide your right hip over towards that left edge and then exhale, supine twist. If you need to bring that left arm over with you into fetal formation and then trace that halo over your head, you can definitely go that route. Release that low spine. You're not forcing it. If your knees are off the mat, 
use something to support them or allow those legs to be a greater than a 90 degree angle. Take a breath in, let that breath go. Take another breath in and let that one go. You're ready, rewind or decompress as your feet come down, your hips neutralize and your legs sway right side to left side. Come back to center, same thing, arms, cactus or T out, feet are on the ground, lift that right hip over towards that right side and then exhale, drop those knees over towards that left side. All the same variations you did on the opposite side, give it a twirl here. Find what feels best on this side versus the other without comparison. Lean into the nose and out of the nose or take that cleansing breath once more. We've got just another two inhales here. And that last inhale. And release. And you're ready. Gaze up towards the ceiling. Bring those legs back into a neutral position, releasing that tailbone, letting your legs swing or sway from right side to left side. If there's something you're craving, something I didn't get to that either we typically do or you're just craving, let yourself go there, guide yourself. Otherwise, knees into the heart, giving yourself a nice little hug and then inhale, final relaxation. If you need to close those blinds, grab a blanket or anything, maybe you have a favorite Shavasana song you're into in this moment, you can turn that on for yourself. But when you decide to find your final resting place, extend those fingertips to the sides of the body, let your legs, your body take up as much space as you possibly can today. We'll all draw a breath in together and we'll all exhale to release and sigh it out together. Let yourself be cradled by the mat, by the earth. Allow the breath to be soft, natural, and unlabored. Give yourself permission to nourish the mind, the body, the spirit, and find that connection within the brain. Enjoy the next moments as we finalize our practice. Bringing awareness back to your space and back to your physical presence. Begin by taking a full breath in through your nose. With contentment, let that breath go. Wiggle the fingers, the toes, your wrists and ankles. Let your head rock from right side of the mat to left side of the mat, awakening the neck and the spine. And then as you return the body back into its alignment, take that big good morning stretch. And as you exhale, curl those knees in towards your heart and then releasing, you can roll over towards that right side, taking your time, rise up into a comfortable seated position. As you arrive into your comfortable position, maybe those eyes remain closed or you have them open, but perhaps your gaze is at a tilt down towards the earth so that they appear to look closed. We'll bring our hands into prayer and at our heart space, we'll create a little friction and heat between those palms as we draw the breath in. And on that exhale, we'll place those warm hands over our eyes. Drawing a breath in here, letting that breath go. 
letting the palms come back into prayer and allowing the thumbs to rest at our third eye or the space between the eyebrows. May you always remind yourself of the intuition that guides you through kindness. Releasing those thumbs now towards the lips or right below the lips. May you speak truth and kindful words. And then bringing those thumbs to your heart's space. May your heart be always filled with joy. The divine in me salutes and honors the divine of the mind in each of you. May you have a beautiful day and a wonderful weekend. From my heart to yours. Namaste.